This is the Austrian scythe, also known as the continental scythe, with cold workable steel. That means you can sharpen it as you work and keep the blade well honed for mowing either grass as part of a hay crop or cereals when you're um, bringing in the harvest. So I'm going to work my way along this blade with a composite artificial coarse grain stone and I'll substitute that with a natural finer grain stone to give me the edge for this grass hook. It's 75 centimeters long and it's a tool that evokes history but it's also very useful for your lawn, your churchyard, your public green space if you want to be more environmentally friendly and you're on a budget. Is that a good pitch? It looked like a pitch when I finished. So that's the, the sharpening I'll do with the coarse stone, but I've created a little burr of metal on the far side of the blade. I just want to remove that burr by running the blade along it, and then I'm ready to pass the fine grain natural stone across the edge, just to give it that extra bit of bite. Working along the edge now with the, the fine grain natural stone. You can see this has been quarried and it's highly prized and in short supply really. Um, because this is what gives you your, your grass blade edge. That should be good enough, but well, we can get started. Blade care, when you store it over winter, you want to use um, olive oil for your blade and linseed oil for your snath. Um, the things that tend to go wrong first are um, superficial rust, so that's easily um, kept at bay by storing uh, it with a, a fine coating of oil. Um, you might see here there's a bit of splitting on the, on the grips, um, and these are the, these, are the, these are the parts of the snath. Uh, that go first. They're subject to the most amount of strain, but they're replaceable. Uh, you can um, you can buy replacements. The whole kit with a grass blade, 75 centimeters long, plus a um, uh, a ditch hook, the shorter of the blades, which is for bramble uh, and hogweed and the like. Um, that's about 55 centimeters. Both combined with uh, with a um, um, a, a snath, a big wooden handle, uh, and a, 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 a hay rake as well. Shouldn't come to more than 200 pounds. We don't stock them. I'm not on commission. That's the basic sort of recommended retail price. But if you think about 200 pounds, that will last effectively as long as it takes you to wear that metal down to the top, <laughs> which could be by the time your great grandchildren have a go, or or further into the future. Then uh, you're not looking at servicing kit. You're not looking at gaining the qualification to use or be the insurance for the use of power powered kit. Um, you're not having to wear any PPE, other personal protective equipment, perhaps apart from gloves. Your work rate might be slower in some contexts, but in others it might be just as good or faster. So I've overtaken a guy managing bramble with a tri-blade brush cutter when I've just been using a ditch hook. And people watching that couldn't believe it, but it was simply because he was using far too much effort, wasting far too much energy. Um, and basically, you're, you can go through a, um, a bramble and, and hogweed, head high hogweed, just as if you had a hot knife and you were, you were you know, going through butter. This is more demanding, um, so you're, 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 obviously you're going to be slower than a mower, but you might be able to tackle parts that mowers can't. That could be really kind of undulose topography, it could mean a steep slope, it could mean an area between gravestones or on the edges of your golf course where you know you need to be between trees. If you're mowing near a tree, um, don't risk damaging the tree. You simply need to run your the rib against the tree and the tree is safe. So if I want to cut that weed, I'm just, re just running the, the blade 
the back of the blade against the tree. Um, and uh, it's all been so well mown, Matt, that it's, uh, it's hard to find something that needs cutting. But yeah, basically you can, you can maneuver around obstacles. Uh, you can have, you know, retain complete control of the blade uh, and your collateral damage is very little. Um, unlike potentially cord on cord strimmers where mm. that cord length as it wears oh, down yeah. and is recharged varies. So your cutting radius varies. So you might clip that sapling and ring bark it and kill it. So you're, um, yeah, you're, this is a much safer tool, of course. Um, you're going to hear the bird song as you work. Um, you're not going to inhale fumes. So it's great um, in terms of your own sort of working environment. Um, and uh, you're not damaging your hearing uh, or anyone else's lungs. Uh, plus, if I were working in this environment, I'd be quite uh, worried about turning any one of these little pieces of pea shingle into a bullet that's going to take out the glass in a car uh, in Banavalen house windows. Um, if I'm the other side of a chain link fence from a playground, I really ought not to be using a strimmer. So um, yeah, basically there are lots of pros, some cons, um, but effectively if you have a small patch to manage as part of a larger hole, that could be a semi-natural feature that relies on you allowing it to grow fully and flower like a, a meadow, then this is the tool for the job to maintain it. And you can buy them from local retailers. One website I'd recommend is Sabi. So that's the Scything Association of Britain and Ireland. It, it, it exists and um, your most local retailer is based down near Kings Lynn. And uh, that's where my scythe master comes from. It's all a bit Jedi, but um, yeah, basically there's a fraternity, sorority of scythers. Um, you're happy to support one another. They'll invite you to events so that you can refine your technique. You can get more involved. Um, what I'm doing at the moment, um, and this is something I'm, I'm just simply doing in my free time. It's not something that's core to my role or my job, but I'm trying to, to help groups establish themselves at the moment, mainly in the south of the county. And uh, soon I hope to, 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 that there will be a, you know, the Colsterworth Scythers, the Grantham or the Queen Elizabeth Park Scythers. And then it's not just about the scything, it's about the biodiversity that you're supporting and the real ale you might drink at the end of the day. <laughs> and that's then is, is forming healthy habits because this is a big thing now, you know, we're trying to keep people uh, healthy and fit, we're trying to encourage people to form healthy habits they keep to. It's about reconnecting members of the community, sharing green spaces, um, and uh, yeah, it's about um, addressing um, intergenerational relationships as well, so that we're passing on the legacy of the precious places with the tools for the job, uh, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, I can't think of a better example than perhaps some of our local churchyards, which, you know, and the Church of England, I'm not a church goer myself, but I've um, I'm now on the Lincoln Diocesan Environmental Advisory Panel for a grandly termed excuse for making sure I'm in the same room as a bishop once every two months to try on behalf of the Wildlife Trust to influence their thinking, their policy, their practice and their planning, their strategies and their financial planning, hopefully to rekindle wildlife, uh, if only from around the edges of 5,000 hectares of glebe land to reach out to communities across the county. Um, 600 parishes means 600 God's acres. And that's a bite-sized chunk that just a few scythers, a few rakes can handle. You can't mow it all at once, which is good for wildlife because you don't want to. You want to leave some structural refuge, but you also want to cut back what would otherwise outcompete your wildflowers. You're simulating, as I said to the previous group, the action of primordial grazing beasts who would have nipped in the bud, encroaching scrub, and you want to be transporting that biomass away. You want to be cutting and clearing, cutting and raking. And that is substituting for a natural process we simply don't have anymore because we've invented fences, domesticated stock, and we now control what breed goes where, for what time of the year, for how long, before we take it off it again. So uh, basically, if we can, in, at least in microcosm, start to you know, reintroduce the, the, the um, the analogues of the substituted sort of processes that wildlife um, no longer has, then we can rekindle it. And we can rekindle it from the sputtering embers, which are our sanctuary spaces with wild time capsule quality soil that hasn't been ploughed, that hasn't been drenched in agrochemicals. And churchyards uh, and some of your local green spaces are really good examples for that. So people and wildlife is all part of the, the Wildlife Trust's uh, mission, but um, what better way to bring them together in terms of exercise, appreciating a space, um, making friends, enjoying an activity, uh, but also bringing back from the brink of local extinction our wildlife.